Hi there, I'm Russ, sailing vessel Tautog, and it's Hurricane Nicole. Let's go check it out. I've got all my hurricane preps ready with the exception of flooding the dinghy. So let's take a quick look. I know the wind noise will be pretty strong when I stick my head up. It's been blowing with very strong wind now for three days. I mean, since I got here, frankly, it, the wind picked up on the Friday I arrived and it was blowing with vigor then and it's really blowing now. About 20, 25 knots, I, my estimate, steady though. 20, maybe gusts up to 30, not awful yet. And nobody's dragging anchor yet. But, well, here's what I've done. So first thing I've done, you'll look up here and you'll see the cockpit canvas is gone, but the solar panels remain. That might be open to some scrutiny. Some people remove their solar panels completely. But you see, I reinforced them with some line, the blue and white line, uh, to help prevent any uplift from taking them loose and I don't think they're gonna go anywhere they, they've been through every tropical storm with all the canvas on in this way and it's never failed yet but again you know, again you know you never know so we'll see maybe I'll be proven to be an idiot well that might already have been proven but okay so this is a dinghy and it's not flooded yet it's still got the bicycle in it I'm gonna take the bicycle ashore in another couple of hours and leave it at my friend's house and then I'm gonna bring the dinghy back and I'm gonna flood it like I did for the Hurricane Ian of our moving you know, anchor which is out there on the white ball. I do the white ball just so you always know where your anchor is and you know, you know Frank over there did the same thing with his. He, and that, that helps a lot visually to know where your anchor is. So a lot of people would probably think why are you drinking a beer at a time like this? And I'll say well there's two things and one is it, it does de-stress you when you drink a little alcohol it actually and I and I believe it makes it possible for you to make better decisions when you're a little bit you know keyed up you drink or have a shot of whiskey or something or rum and then you kind of feel like look it's not that big a deal and to me I'm already there mentally it's the end of the world is not coming tomorrow the boat might be destroyed I might be sunk but it's not gonna be the end of the world for good old Russ here um, and I tell, you know, tell my girlfriend, you know, that if I were to lose the boat somehow and we got drug aground and we we're laying over on our side and they flooded the inside of the boat and all this work I did is for nothing, then, you know, you don't get to undo it. So if that turns out to be the result in two days, then I'll just pick up the pieces and keep on going. And I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cry about it. And, Life goes on because I know that a few days after the boat was destroyed, I'd be on an airplane to the Philippines and you know, and I'd be with her. And we'll buy a boat there and we'll keep on sailing. That's that that would be what the result is. So with that perspective, then you know, it helps you kind of step a little bit above it and say, you know, let's do our best, let's get the second anchor ready, let's protect the dinghy, let's do all the things that we should do, but you never know what's gonna happen. If the storm really, really strengthens and it could be ugly. And probably all of us are going to result and get some kind of advice. So, so good morning. It's Wednesday, November 9. And it's, this is Hurricane Nicole Day. Um, the Hurricane Nicole is going to make landfall this late afternoon slash evening. I don't know exactly. Somewhere. I'm sure when it's dark and when it's raining and you can't see. You know, that's usually the way it seems to work. Instead of having in the daytime when you can see. But whatever. That always seems to be the way it is. And uh, I was pretty much up all last night. Kind of sleeping with one eye open, it's as prepared as we can be. I've, I've, I've eaten breakfast, I've run the engine, I've cleaned the engine bilge, and I mean, it's, the engine's ready to start at a moment's notice. So all you can do now is watch the boat as she tends with the wind and be alert for any signs that you're dragging anchor. And how do you do that? Well, yeah, so many times I've showed you this um, kind of picture. And my anchor, the theoretical position is up here. And that's based only on an assumption based on the arc you know, you know the arc is drawn and so um, I've been swinging back and forth back and forth back and forth for now for 24 hours really it's been four days now I only started this track 24 hours ago winds are coming out of the northeast they'll stay that way pretty much and probably depending where the storm makes landfall they could veer anywhere from west to straight north and yeah, that horse remain northeast so I'm not inclined to make a lot of changes right now <clears throat> because my anchor is set has been set for four days it's been blowing hard out of the northeast now for four days everything from when i got here it was blowing about 15 knots 
And that afternoon on Friday it got to 20 knots and it's been 20, 20 plus for now for four days. It's Wednesday, it's still freaking blowing. So you see jerry cans are here for water and for fuel. They would normally be up on deck and they're down. My life raft is down. The dinghy is down, of course. And I didn't want it hanging on the back of the boat. I put it in the water and I flooded it like I usually do. Top side. Yeah, these days the uh, wind noise has been just unavoidable. So up on the sail, you see I've got my normal sail ties, and I put the purple rope around the sail to secure the sail twice. You don't want the sail coming loose, and I look up and I inspect anything I can do to stop these lines from bouncing around, and you really can't. And of course, most of my attention was directed to the anchors. So down in the water, I've got my primary anchor. It's, at the, it's underneath that um, white fender floating out there. My neighbor, if you look up at his boat, you can see a white ball in front of him and he did the same thing to mark his anchor location. And that becomes important later for the two of us. And here's the fleet. You now there's a trimaran over there, that's Mark, and behind me is a fleet of other boats. About eight boats in total. Yeah, so that's the look top side. Um, you saw the boat in front of me, um, directly upwind. Now I got here first and he pulled in after I did but when he chose that location we had a different forecast so I'm you know there's nothing unsailor like that he did you know to pick that location but it is I would say it's within the realm of possible outcomes so what are the things that could happen tonight um, everybody stays fixed nobody dies nobody's boat drags anchor everybody's fine and we all meet tomorrow to have drinks that'd be the best outcome um, it's possible that one or more of the boats drag anchor. It could be me. It could be. I, I don't know. He, that guy in front of me has two anchors out. But if he should still drag anchor, then he would likely drag right into me. And if he did, it might very well dislodge me from my anchor's position and I would start dragging. And then together we'll drag aft and whack into those boats behind us. That could happen. Um, it's possible that just I alone drag and I drag all by myself and if that's so we, we just don't know So if I start dragging my plan is to get the engine on and just point into the wind and try to hold position if possible And just take the weight off the anchor and then when I got a lull I would either try to raise the anchor up and go reset it further forward in the bay Yeah, we've had our first boat drift free already, so we're gonna get more tender though This might be a good time to discuss while we're looking at this event unfold. You know, what is the best situation I have? So if I went with a single anchor. I never did drop my backup anchor before the event, and I never had to drop it. But this guy ended up having three anchors out before the storm, and that makes his task now much more difficult because he's got to drive towards his anchor, but he's got three of them in different directions. And in the meantime, you see he's kind of swinging with the wind and he's coming really, really close to this old boat. And that's how he hit me a few minutes before this, was swinging sideways and whacked into my side. And so this goes on for probably 20, 30 minutes. My anchor is there, Frank's in the white ball, and that anchor has drug at least uh, 300 feet across. He was way in front of me before, and he drug alongside me as we swing back and forth. He, he whacked into me. So you saw where his anchor was, and now his anchor is right next to my anchor. And as he was dragging back, he was swinging to the right and then to the left, and during one of his right passes is when he hit me. So there I'm pointing at his anchor right now, right next to my anchor. 10 meters, not even, uh, from my anchor, side to side. 
and we know that the wind is going to change direction soon, so you have to get the separation. So luckily for us, a gentleman named Lionel from the sailing vessel about time, he jumped in his dinghy and he buzzed over there to this boat and he helped kind of get the situation on. The other boats seem to be stable. <clears throat> Nobody's moved so far. That trimaran way back there, I don't know about him, but uh, none of the other guys have moved. I'm only dealing with Frank right now, he's the only one moving. Let's keep stuff in let's keep stuff in perspective here. They're just boats, and we just want Frank and I to stay alive. It will be okay. I'm not angry in any way. So, uh, but he's got two anchors out. He's slowly dragging past me. So I put fenders out, and I'm trying to help. But we we tend to oscillate on the uh, anchors, and when we oscillate the wrong way, we hit. So here we come again. Hello, hang on, heads up, heads up. Okay, so I'm inside the cabin. You probably can't see my beautiful face. <laughs> this is so bizarre. <laughs> it's pretty bizarre. I've got people sending me text messages and stuff like that, wishing me well as I'm crashed getting hit. So I got impacted by another boat already. This is only 6 p.m. We got six hours to go before the landfall. So yikes, you know how bad this is gonna get, but I'm not angry at the guy. Uh, he anchored as best he could. He had two anchors out and they just started dragging and he was right in front of me, dragged right downwind into me. The great news is my anchor is still holding. He did not drag his anchor across my chain. Thank heavens for that. So my anchor is still fixed as if nothing had happened. It's just that the two boats bumped together and my boat's going to win most of those contests. Because uh, And I've got my, my Spanish radio playing in the background. Yeah, so it's all okay so far. Um, we survived that one. So Lionel from a boat, a boat called About Time, I think that's her name, he jumped into his darn dinghy and came over to help Frank because I was unwilling to leave Tautog. I could have. I was willing to jump in the boat and go help him, but not until I saw him get himself set. It sounds crazy, but my boat was in imminent danger, not, not Lionel. So Lionel jumped in his dinghy and went to go help Frank, and they got Frank re-anchored further away from me, so that's no longer a threat to me. <sighs> I was in the middle of a nap, and I woke up when something physically hit me, and it was Frank's boat. So, and I didn't put fenders out, and I don't normally put fenders out at this type of thing, because I want, I'd rather have minimum wind resistance. But again, my boat's gonna win most of these damn, these impacts. If you have a lot of crashes, I'll probably win. <sighs> So let's hope that's the only incident tonight, and let's hope we can go through the next six hours unscathed, baby. Let's hope for that. Well, it's uh, nine o'clock exactly at night. We still got three hours before landfall. We still don't know exactly where the landfall is going to be. I mean, it's, it, it could be a whisker north of us, which would be good. It could be a little bit south of us, which would be not as good. We don't decide. And there's not much else you could do at this point. I just watch my anchor drag alarm, which is here. It's on my phone. So on the phone, it's got the little map. That's what I use. And it shows us where it thinks my anchor is. But that's not really true. The anchor is really out here. But I've let out more scope. And I have started and stopped it. But I've been tracking anywhere in that black blob. And that little black uh, thing is me. That icon is me. So and I swing back and forth because the wind... The wind clocks a little differently, but mostly the boats tend to do a little fishtail type m motion, even though they stay the same distance from the anchor. So, all the boats are spinning a little bit like that. I'm also keeping in the plot on my chart plotter, which you guys have seen before. And so I can show you that, you can see that's where I used to be, and then I let out more scope here, and then I let out even more scope, so I'm down swinging back and forth in here. And the gusts have really started, so there's no sleeping anymore for me. I, I'm tired. I'd like to sleep. Yeah, I, I'm tired and I would like to sleep, but um, I don't see how you could now. It's, and there's not a hell of a lot you can do. If the anchor really started to drag, 
then I would probably just get on the engine and drive the boat very easy forward trying to take the strain off the anchor and try to hold position with the engine. And if need be, sit there for an hour or two just idling or you know, motoring ahead. If I thought I was, had, and certainly if someone was here to help, I would drive all the way to my anchor, pick it up and reset it. But that would be very difficult to do by myself. It, it really would. So. They say that hope is never part of your plan. Well, in some cases, um, hope is the plan. And, uh, you, you hope the storm doesn't hit us exactly. You, you hope it weakens a lot. You hope a lot of things. But just hope I can survive the next four hours on this boat, four or five hours. If, we can, if we're still floating and we're still in the same spot in five hours, then the worst has passed. So I'm tired and I'm hungry. You know, it's just that, that time of day when it's, we're just kind of resigned to my fate in a way, but you can't go down without a fight either, you know. If, <laughs> if the boat is dragging, you don't just lay back and let a dragon crash into people. You, you have to try to fight it. It's just very difficult to do when you're single-handed, that's all. No, no, we're not going out there. <laughs> that's just absolutely necessary. So the bright lights in the foreground, just behind my boat, that's my friend Ross's big boat. We're all kind of doing that. We're all kind of flinging around on our anchors. The wind has us tending, of course, downwind from the anchor, but the boat itself tends to keep driving to the right and the left, so you end up making a track that looks like an arc. Behind him, there's a single white light. That's the sailboat. That's Lionel and Michelle. The one off to my left over there, there's a small single white light. That's an abandoned boat. They anchored it and the guy left. And just at the moment, the rain stopped and the wind is in a lull, which is kind of weird. So we're not into the thick of it yet. We've got another hour to go and then that's really going to get sporty. Just wanted you to hear that howling noise. Well, it's almost midnight. It's still Wednesday night, 23.55. I just checked the uh, the weather radar, actually, the same one I use on a normal day. Uh, and this is the picture of the, the radar picture 10 minutes ago. You can see the uh, storm, that's the eye of the storm there. And it was going ashore, so I think we're very, I think this uh, eye is going to pass above us, hopefully in another 20 minutes, that's my prediction, we should see the winds completely go flat. I sure hope so. Uh, this is what we've been doing all night long. Um, so this being, fuck me, uh, yeah, so this is what we've been doing all night long. It looks bad because when you see almost, a, well yeah, you see a knot, that's because we're swinging side to side pretty enthusiastically. Anchor's up here somewhere. I kind of put that just as, as based on where the arc is. And depending on the wind, you know, we tack, we track somewhere in here. Okay, And that's where I've been all night. And you can see it's got a couple of saw teeth. That's because twice I've let out more and more scope. I let off scope, then I let out more scope. And, that's, and uh, this is my anchor drag alarm. It's kind of showing me doing the same kind of thing. Oh my God. Okay, it looks like we weren't filming. So um, it's 2.30 in the morning. Um, um, for me, tropical or, or uh, Hurricane Nicole is about done. It's, um, we're definitely on the southwestern edge of the eye. We're rotating around with the wind, because the wind is now coming out of the west and southwest. Or maybe a little bit northwest, it's hard to tell sometimes, but I'm tending, I'm tending northeast of my anchor. So you can see where I spent the bulk of the evening was down here in this blob. The inner blob first, then I let out scope, then I let out more scope, but I spent, you know, well, really four days in this area. Never really moved in four days always pointing into the northeast but now it's completely different now I'm facing the west and I'm drifting where that you can see I'm just spinning around on the anchor
So that's not, um, I mean, it's, it's good that we consider the storm to be over. I, mean, I don't think that we're done having rain today. I'm sure we would have some rain later on at some point, but you never know. But for, but for violent weather, yeah, that, that part is probably over. We, we might get a few strong gusts if another outer band comes in from the southwest. It's possible. That's why it behooves us to watch the anchor as, a, as, as we tend around to a new heading. And I'll, kind of, I'll just observe it, make sure nothing looks like it's tangled, that kind of stuff. And, uh, so that you'll be able to handle new winds if they should come. So for me, I'm going to go jump in the dinghy, actually, put the plug in, pump the water out, put the outboard back on, have the dinghy ready for service, because some of the other guys in the anchorage here might need it. I have a dinghy that floats and that has an engine, and not everybody here has that at the moment, so and a lot of people are going to need to go ashore. They've been kind of stuck here for a couple of days, so, and I, you know, some folks helped me over the last couple of days, and I've helped other folks the last couple of days, so if, um, it's kind of like a little communist uh, so, uh, society here where you come each according to your means and two each according to your needs. So it's all, all, all good here and uh, I'm gonna sign off for now and probably later I'll have a blurb about anchors. What we what I think about anchors having been through this event. So cheers. Alright, good morning. It's uh, Thursday time approximately 7 a.m. and the winds are flip-flop, completely reversed, and uh, still blown with a lot of robustitude, which is not really a word. So the winds are blowing quite strongly. I would call it 20 plus, probably 20, gusting 25, 30, something like that. But it's enough to make an uncomfortable day, and it's kind of pissy rain. It's like Scotland weather, is what this is like. <laughs> um, but again, no complaints, all the boats in the field seem to have spun around on their anchor just fine and we're uh, I'm just looking out the window getting distracted but uh, yeah so since the collision which was like 5 30 6 o'clock last night it was almost it was just becoming dark at that point and uh, um, but since then everything has been fine it's been a little bit of work because one other boat had um, their snubber break and I saw Ross and his son and uh, Al working on that but I didn't get involved in that personally because I really couldn't help. They're you know, 50 meters away and I had my dinghy flooded. So it's, so um, mostly you're just watching out for other people. But uh, I would say successful storm management was used by everybody here. You know, um, I, I don't know what caused uh, Frank to drag early in the evening, but he dragged and he, boy, he was just zipping across this of cove. But when he uh, reset the anchor, it stuck. And that's good. So, so it's all good. Um, all good. I'm just gonna be. Uh, I'll probably stay on the boat most of the day. And uh, the winds are supposed to continue to slowly die down. And by by uh, 7 p.m., like 12 hours from now, we should be back down to five to ten knots of wind. You know, calm, borderline calm conditions by this evening. But it's gonna be sporty now. It's gonna get less sporty and get calmer and calmer through the day. As, According to the uh, predict wind models, I say predict wind models. Uh, the you know, the GFS and the ECMWF models. That's the ones I look at most. So, Oy. so I'm looking ashore. I'm pretty close to shore. Probably too close, but uh, uh, it's flooding. Um, I can see already that the water's above the seawall. I'm going to go topside, but I will stop talking. I'll voice over later. Okay, my photography sucks as usual, but you can see the water going clear across people's docks, clear across the seawalls. But I did not see water enter anybody's houses. Yeah, so uh, thanks for watching, guys. So as you can see, um, we survived, no problem. Um, I did have a collision uh, uh, that Teltog was involved in, but um, you know, Teltog is going to win most collisions. I mean, let's face it, uh, her hull is, is is that thick, and, it's, and we're going to win most of those. So I'm not worried, and I wasn't worried at the time that it was going to hazard my vessel. The worry is always that you, you end up dragging anchor somehow. Um, and so we could talk about what's the best anchor set up for a storm. Um, I went with one anchor and a lot of scope. The guy who dragged had three anchors out. 
another guy who had trouble with his bridle had two anchors out. So all the people with a single anchor, I think, were just fine. And I'm not sure if that's causal or not, or if it's just happenstance. Um, also, what type of boat is it? Boats with a lot of windage, like a lot of area above the water level and very little below, they were the two, you know, that had issues. Um, and uh, the one that dragged and hit me was a catamaran. And it had very little stuff below the water line. And uh, so again, I, and again, is that causal? I really don't know. I mean, I, you can talk to hydrodynamic people and see what's the best, best, best way to do things. But I got a bit of thinking to do. Um, I, I know I need to increase the amount of chain I have, but I have not a lot of chain compared to most people. So, so there, the, the conclusions are still in my head. I'm still kind of mulling over that kind of stuff. And uh, I appreciate anybody's comments about what's the best, best way to anchor for um, for heavy, heavy weather. Um, again, I went with my normal anchor and a lot of road. I put out a lot of the rope into the road. I put all my chain, of course. Um, I always do that. And I had, I just kept on adding more rope the, the, as the wind speed picked up. And I, I ended up not budging one inch. So I'm, you know, I, it, it seems like it worked. But is it going to work in all cases? Hell, I don't know. But I appreciate your comments. And uh, take care, everybody. We'll get another video out. I don't know what's next for me. <coughs> so, um,. So, um, what's next? Probably going to lay here for a few days at a minimum. I'm, I'm not going to get a good weather window. I mean, today would be a perfect day to make the crossing to the Bahamas because I've got winds out of the southwest. They're gentle. The Gulf Stream might still be kind of ugly because it had four and a half days of, of normal northeasterly strong, strong winds in the 30 mile an hour to 40 mile an hour range. And then it had a hurricane pass over. So I imagine the Gulf Stream is still boiling quite a bit, and you should take a full day or two to settle down. And by then, the southerly winds will be done, gone. So, and I'm not prepared to go anyway. So I, I have some things on order. I have a piece of mail waiting at my friend's house, and so I, I can't go immediately. And by the time I could go, um, my southerly winds will be gone. So I know that I'm probably due to stay here for another week or so, and that's what I'm thinking, and that's just fine with me because, frankly, I'm. I was tired out. I'm going to be taking a lot of naps again today. I'm going to do some exercise, kind of, you know, pressing reset and just to try to enjoy life for a few days and just relax and, you know, get some jobs done, of course, but, you know, mostly relax. So, so don't worry too much about me, folks. I'm not going to make the crossing the Bahamas anytime in the next few days. I'm sure of that. Um, um, so life is good here in Fort Pierce, Florida. It's just going to be a flat out beautiful day today. I can see that already. And I'm just grateful you'll be alive. Nobody here got hurt, so we're, we're all good. We had a nice little get-together last night to celebrate our success. And now, let's get this video put out. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.